Hey guys, my name is Amanda. Welcome to my channel. If you're new to my channel and you like the content you see today, please consider subscribing. If you have already subscribed, you're absolutely amazing and thank you so much for your support. Everyone, please consider giving me a big thumbs up as that really helps me out here on YouTube. Also, before I forget, if you do subscribe, remember to hit that bell button so you're notified every single time that I upload. I am so excited about today's DIYs, so let's jump into it. Here's a super cute and functional idea for a reversible decor piece. It has pumpkin pie on one side and cherry pie on the other, and it has real recipes that you can use, but I wanted to give it kind of like a little diner setup look, and I wanted it to be reversible. So we're going to begin with this Dollar Tree cutting board, this Dollar Tree cherry pie picture with a recipe and the pumpkin pie with a recipe. I also have this long MDF sign that I have cut to the length of the two recipe signs. I covered the glittery side of my cutting board with some brown craft paper. I took my two pieces of MDF sign and glued them down on the cutting board kind of at an angle and then I painted the entire thing with some ivory waverly chalk paint. I then glued my cherry pie and my apple pie back to back using hot glue so that I can just have them nice and lined up. Once that is done, I just grab some ribbon from my stash and glue that all the way around to cover up that ugly seam. So this is the five under five video. I'm counting the cost of the cutting board, the MDF sign that I used as a riser and also my cherry pie and my apple pie. I'm not counting the ribbon because I think pretty much everyone has ribbon in your stash. So whatever you like, just grab it and use it to cover up those seams. I also put a strip on the front and the back of my little cutting board to almost kind of look like a little piece of tablecloth. Um, I kind of wanted to go with like a diner vibe. I also took another strip of that ribbon that I had cut the wires off and tied it around at the handle. Then I took a little bit of silver lining Waverly chalk paint and dry brushed around the open spot of my cutting board. Here's what it looks like. I think it is absolutely adorable and this base is right about five dollars it is up to you how you decorate it and that will be extra so for me i took these little hanging sites and i put a pumpkin pie on the pumpkin pie side and a cherry pie at on the cherry pie side. I just glued them kind of at an angle with the bottom flush to the cutting board and then one of those little ridges of the pie kind of touching up to the sign so it's glued at an angle. I then glue some leaves from my stash on the top of the sign, a couple of pumpkins from my stash on the pumpkin side, and then on the cherry pie side I did a couple of beautiful leaves and some other decorations that I had in my stash. So again the base is five and then you decorate it as you like. But how adorable is this? I absolutely love it. I love that it's reversible. I'm displaying it here with some of my other little faux desserts that I have made in a previous video, which I will link below. That little pumpkin pie I had made in a previous video, as well as the cherry pie slice. And it just goes so well with this DIY, I feel. And I can just move this around depending on my mood or what I am craving. So I really hope that you guys like this functional reversible DIY. I say functional because I'm actually going to try out these recipes and see how they work. So when I do that, I will let you guys know. But anyway, let's go ahead and move on to our next idea. Our next DIY is using Dollar Tree items as well, and you can make two of them for the $5 mark, but I am showing you three of them because I wanted to show you a couple of different ways to do it. So grab up some of these absolutely adorable Dollar Tree glass loaf pans that have different designs on the front. Also grab up a Dollar Tree car sponge. For this one, I cut it in half, and then I cut the half in half. 
like so. I glued the rounded part to the bottom of my little mini pan and then I used those other two skinny pieces you see here. I had just taken that larger leftover piece and cut it in half. I'm going to tuck one on either side of this rounded piece. For one of them though I am going to cut off a few little pieces just to tuck in the corners of this loaf pan to fill it out. It does not matter for this one if there are seams. We are going to cover it up really nice Nicely and you'll never be able to tell. What matters is just having a nice rounded shape like a cute little loaf. So for that one, we're going to set it aside. Now here is a way where you can do it using a larger piece of sponge. You just trace out your loaf pan onto the sponge and cut it out and then shove it in there. So going back to our first little loaf where we have some seams at the top, we're going to take some of this Dollar Tree fuzzy yarn and this beautiful burnt orange color that I'm kind of obsessed with right now. We're going to double the yarn over so we have kind of more to work with. And then I'm literally just going to zigzag back and forth over top of this whole loaf gluing down as I go. I also did it with a beautiful brown color so it kind of looks like a banana bread or an apple bread. Now going back to that huge piece that does not have any seams in it we are going to paint it with a mixture of light mocha and classic caramel. I just use a sponge brush to paint that on. Then I grab up some of these little pebbles from the gardening section from Dollar Tree and I use this hazelnut to color my pebbles. Once they're colored, I then mix in some Mod Podge. I had used a little too much, so I transferred to another plate so it wasn't quite as messy. But I'm using the Mod Podge so that the paint won't come off these rocks and this will kind of give um, like a glossy look, almost like this is kind of in a syrupy type mixture like you find on a real cake. I'm drying it off a little bit and then I'm spreading the mixture on top of that cake that we had just painted or well bread that we had just painted with that like mocha and classic caramel mixture. It doesn't have any seams so this was a perfect choice to put our little faux nut or faux streusel mixture on top of. I'm just spreading it out how I like it and this hardened perfectly. It looks absolutely adorable and it looks like a real uh, faux nut mixture. So here is what that looks like and then here's what my other two yarn little loaves look like and again you can make two of these loaves for around the five dollar mark. I just wanted to show you a couple of different ways to do that. I think these are absolutely adorable for a coffee bar or for any kind of kitchen setting. Really hope you like it too. Let's talk about today's challenge, the five under five. So we are challenged to make five crafts for under five dollars each. Our hosts are Missy from the Crafty Cove, Emily from Farm Charm Chic. Their guest host this month is Robin from Robin Spies and DIYs. Talented ladies, great friends of mine. I will have their channels linked below in my description box as well as the playlist. You can get tons of fall inspiration you don't want to miss. All right, you guys, let's jump into our next idea. So I found this adorable little MDF 3D pumpkin at the Dollar Tree in the plus section for $5. And I thought, you know what, this is awesome, but I can make a lot more of these for $5 just using this. So I played around with it to see how it went together. And then I grabbed up a piece of foam board from Dollar Tree and I traced all of these MDF pieces. There are three of them that just kind of click into each other. Once they were all traced, I use my X-Acto knife to cut them all out and they do not have to be perfect. This works out really well and for $1.25 for a piece of poster board you could make at least two of these. Once I had my cutouts I made sure that they fit together nicely and they do. You can also sand the edges of these with a piece of sanding paper. I grabbed up a couple pieces of scrapbook paper that I liked. I traced these pieces of pumpkin onto 
into my scrapbook paper and cut them out. For each piece of pumpkin, I am going to put the same scrapbook paper on either side. So I'm actually using three different types of scrapbook paper. So I have one with some beautiful sunflowers. Then I'm going to have two of them with a couple of different solid colors. Want to use your glue stick to adhere your scrapbook paper. You can then just kind of trim around the edges and clean up anything that you need to clean up and then just kind of do the other side. So here I am using my little sanding sponge from Dollar Tree to just kind of clean up those edges. And of course, I'm going to repeat the same process on my other two pieces. Once that is done, I do take a little bit of jute and I go around the edges of these pumpkin pieces just to clean up that edge and cover up the fact that this is actually a foam board. So I just put a little trail of glue down and then press down that little jute twine and it covers it up perfectly. I repeat this step for all of the pieces and I also wrap this little stem piece with some jute twine as well just to kind of add a little bit of dimension and just kind of finish it off. I glue it down there at the top and trim off any excess. Then here's what we have. Absolutely adorable and it's time to go ahead and assemble this little foam board pumpkin. So I just put all of the pieces together and here's what it looks like. Absolutely adorable you can use that one five dollar template to make as many of these as you would like and you can vary sizes as well just by using that as the inspiration piece so again here's what this looks like a nice sturdy freestanding piece i hope you like okay guys next idea and my favorite of the whole video is a trash to treasure, absolutely delicious looking fall cake. Let's jump into it. So my kids eat up ice cream like crazy. This lasted about one night in my house. So I grabbed the empty bucket and I washed it really well. I flipped it over, added some glue to the bottom and just cut a rough circle out of a Dollar Tree car washing cloth or car drying cloth and applied that to the bottom, which is our top. I then cut two more pieces out of that same cloth off and just wrapped them around the sides of my little ice cream bucket using hot glue and then I'm going to trim off the bottom. So here I am with a one side and then the other one and you guys this does not have to be perfect. I tried to pull it as tight as I can. There are two seams there but applying the Mod Podge really helps disguise that and it helps harden up this fuzzy cloth so it looks more like icing and less like a fuzzy cloth. So I coated the sides really well with generous amounts of Mod Podge and again I'm voicing this over the next day and I can tell you overnight it hardened really perfectly and it does not look like a fizzy cloth at all. Now I am mixing a little bottle of classic caramel by Apple Barrel from Walmart with some Mod Podge. I'm going to mix that really really well about half and half and then I am just going to pour that on top of my cake. I'm going to use my little spongy brush to help me spread it out and it didn't drip down the sides quite as much as I had hoped so once I have it spread out on top I just turn my little sponge from Dollar Tree sideways and I just make little dabbing motions which gives me the effect of like this glaze is dripping down the sides. I then glue my cake to a Dollar Tree charger and I did um, apply the top the ice cream bucket to the bottom if that makes sense so that I would have more surface to glue to this Dollar Tree charger. I then made another faux nut mixture with those rocks and that hazelnut paint just like I had done in the previous DIY. I also added Mod Podge like I did in the previous DIY and I spread it on top of my cake. I then used some Dollar Tree caulk and I began with just a little sandwich bag with a hole cut in the side to pipe around my cake and then my son took mercy on me and let me use one of his Dollar Tree bakery bags but honestly I just grab up anything that you can squeeze the cock out of and have a little bit of control I'm not quite sure which tip I use but it really it doesn't matter you guys I'm honestly not very good at decorating cakes like this but I think it came out okay I put a little a pumpkin on the top and a couple of leaves and this is well under five dollars I think it's absolutely adorable it hardens 
every night really, really well. And I think this will last me the whole fall season. I think just for a couple of bucks, it is so nice to keep a piece of something out of the landfill and instead decorating my home and giving gorgeous, yummy fall vibes. Okay, next idea. This idea was so inexpensive, I actually made it a set to get closer to the $5 mark. So we have a cute little beaded garland and a little coffee mug. So I found this from Dollar Tree and I didn't really like the shape on the bottom. I guess it's supposed to be like a little teacup sitting on a plate. I didn't really care for that. So I used my sharp scissors to round out the bottom. I also cut off that kind of weird little pointy thing hanging off the handle um, and just made it the shape that I liked. And then you can just sand off the rough edges so you don't get a splinter. I then took a piece of fabric that I liked from Dollar Tree, a very small piece, and just used it to cover up this teacup. It is thick enough that I actually just used hot glue around the edges of the teacup and smoothed this out. I then cut off any excess. So here we're at $1.25 plus just a tiny piece of that fabric, so maybe just $1.50. I pulled the fabric tight and glued it on the back side. Then I just took a little bit of that beautiful orange yarn that I had used in the previous project, doubled it over and wrapped the handle just for a little bit of texture and kind of a different look. So this craft is really only going to be under $2 because I also use one of these little window clings from Dollar Tree. I just chose one that I liked and I cut it out. I'm keeping the backing on so that the window cling is not see-through and that plaid pattern does not show through it. I want it to be more open cake so I'm just cutting it out and then I'm going to use hot glue to glue it to the middle of my little cup here and once that is done I am then going to take one more little strand of that fuzzy yarn and I'm just going to frame out this little hello autumn window cling by gluing down my little yarn and going all the way around each sign I just think it adds a little something to frame this out and it's absolutely adorable once that is done, I'm then going to grab up a few Jenga blocks and I'm going to glue them to the back of my little mug so that it stands up. I think this is perfect for a coffee bar or any kind of kitchen area. I think it gives some really adorable little fall vibes, but I wanted something to match it. So I grabbed up this little beaded garland, this little fox, the yarn and fabric we had already been using. So these two things together are going to be under $5 a cute little set. I just wound the yarn around my hand multiple times, probably about 25. And then I took it off my hand and tied off the top with another piece of yarn. Once that is done, I cut through the bottom to make it look more like a tassel. And then I took another piece of yarn and tied it around the top. And that is how easy it is to make an adorable, a fuzzy, fluffy little tassel. I think it is so cute. Once that is done, just kind of get it how you like it, trim off any excess, and we can go ahead and move into the next part, which is grabbing up one of these little wooden box cutouts. They come eight to a pack, so this is way less than a dollar. And I just put a little bit of hot glue around the outline, and then I place a piece of that matching fabric on top of my little foxy, and I just push it down. Again, this fabric is thick enough that the hot glue does not show through. Once that is done, I go ahead and just trim around the fox. I started out using some larger scissors and then I quickly switched to my tiny little pink detail scissors from Dollar Tree. Once that side is complete, I just flip it over and do the exact same thing on the other side. Once that is done, I tie a knot in the bottom of my little beaded garland and attach that to what's going to be the back side of my fox. You could stain or paint these beads, but I thought they were perfect just the color that they were, so I left them like they were and just tied on that little tassel on the other end, and here is a cute and adorable little beaded garland. I absolutely love how they look together. I love the fact that they are a set and can kind of brighten up any area that you need a little brightening. Thank you so much for watching today. I'm going to give you a brief reminder of everything we made. I really hope you enjoyed today's video. Please don't forget to subscribe if you have not. And take care, friends.
Okay, here's another glimpse at that yummy, awesome looking cake that we made out of an old ice cream bucket. Here is a look at those little faux loaves displayed with those little faux pumpkin pie and apple pie that I will have linked in my description box, our little cup and garland set, and our foam pumpkin, as well as our double-sided recipe sign. Thank you so much for watching. Take care, friends. I'll see you soon and subscribe to my mom's channel and thank you for watching today's craft and stay safe